Ooh-wee. 3 and 3-0 sweep yesterday. Gotta love that. Let's talk some baseball. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back into another episode for Just a Bet Outside. I am your host, Steven. Happy hump day to everybody. That's right. It's already Wednesday. We're getting through the week, and we're getting through it well, guys. 3-0 and sweep yesterday. Gotta love that. Man, that was awesome. A uh, little sweaty on some of those, just a little bit, but we'll talk about the bets recap here in a second. Before we dive in, smash that like button. We didn't even have 200 likes in the last video. We can do better than that. I know we can. So thank you guys for everyone commenting. Always a ton of comments, and we appreciate that more than you know. That helps the channel grow. You guys are a part of the growth of this channel, so that's pretty awesome. We are trying to reach 6,000 subscribers by our first anniversary for this channel. That's right. September 3rd was our first video we ever did last year. We're approaching it. I think we can hit 6K before that. That would be awesome. We'll have a little giveaway if we can do that. So anyways, that's where we're at. Leave a comment, like, all that kind of stuff. But in this video, we have a little tweak to the pitcher report too. But we got the good hitter matchups, the good pitcher strikeout matchups, the pitcher report, and the best bets. In that pitcher report, we have added a new column. We have now the walk percentage. Thanks for the question uh, and the, the idea. At DMB Pride 10 he asked if we could add the walks column, and I thought, why aren't we doing that already, to be honest with you? Maybe someone asked that earlier. If you did, I'm sorry I missed it, but um, we got to do it. It's easy. It's important. So the walk percentage is now in that one. You will see that in just a little bit. But now I got a big smile on my face. Let's talk about that 3-0 sweep. Bring up that bets recap. There it is. How beautiful is that? Three green check marks, 3-0 day. Brave team total over 5.5. Five runs going to the ninth inning, and they score three and get it done. Thank you to the Pirates for having six runs scored and making the Braves offense keep scoring. Gotta love it. Over eight and a half Rockies Brewers, 3-3 three, three at the end of nine, and the Rockies got at least three runs in the top of the tenth. I stopped watching it, uh, but thank you for that little extra innings. Ghost runner on second. Gotta love that when you're on an over. Uh, just like we drew it up, by the way. I knew it was going to – that's why I like the over. I knew we'd use extra innings. Um, anyways, Olsen Bellinger. The no sweat bet win. Gotta love those hitter parlays. We're on a roll with those. 3 0 day up 3.04 units. We are now up 4.82 units. Let's get to 10, please. Baseball is tough, but we can do it. But before we dive into all the matchups, a word from our sponsor. All right, there it is. Thrive Fantasy, guys. You gotta sign up. It's eligible in over 30 states. New users get a 100% first deposit match up to $250. If you use that promo code Jabbo or the link below, that's a heck of a deal, guys. You put in, say, 200 bucks, you get $200 matched all the way up to 250 You just have to at least put in $25. This is a great deal. The free square today is Kevin Gaussman over a half a strikeout. So what you do is you use that free square because you know that's a guaranteed winner. You add it to another leg, and there it is, guys. If you get two out of two to uh, correct, you win 3.2 times your money. You can do a three-leg parlay, four-leg parlay. I mean, just a heck of a deal. You put in 200, get 200 match, and you already have one of your two legs, guys. It's it's awesome. So Thrive Fantasy, go check it out. Like I said, eligible in over 30 states. you got to use the promo code Jabbo. They have a great one, great for player props. It's going to be good for baseball, basketball, football, everything. So there it is. Now it's time to talk some good hitter matchups. All right, we have 10 good hitter matchups for you today, and it starts with Mr. Andrew Benatendi of the White Sox. 13 for 34, four doubles and two home runs versus Luis. I forgot how to pitch Severino. Max Muncy of the Dodgers, 12 for 30, three doubles and one home run versus Merrill Kelly. And then we got his teammate, Will Smith, eight for 25, two doubles and one home run versus Kelly. And another Dodger, we're not done. Freddie Freeman, seven for 21, five doubles and one home run versus Kelly. Ahmed Rosario of the Dodgers, five for six, five singles versus Kelly. I know I don't usually use uh, hitters that only have six at-bats, but when you're five for six, I just I had to include it. So, anyways, next one, Rafael Devers of the Red Sox, six for 17 with one double versus Kevin Gaussman. And then his teammate, Justin Turner of the Red Sox, four for nine, one double and one home run versus Kevin Gaussman. And then we got Brian Reynolds of the Pirates, five for 14 with one double versus Max Freed, who looked very good in his start that he just had coming off the I.L., and then we got Mark Canna of the Brewers now. That's right. He got traded 5 for 13, 1 double versus Chris Flexen. And we end it with Kiner Falefa. Falefa. I, had, for, I never know how to pronounce it. Of the Yankees. 4 for 9 and 1 double versus Mike Levenger. Those are the 10 good hitter matchups. Now let's move on to those good pitcher strikeout matchups. 
Let's talk some arms. We have three good pitcher strikeout matchups. It starts with Mr. Mackenzie Gore of the Nats going up against the Phillies. Phillies' fifth highest strikeout percentage versus lefties in the last 30 days at 27%. little surprising. Uh, Gore, 129 Ks and 112 innings. He has faced the Phillies twice this year, and he has 6 Ks and 3 Ks versus them, so not a ton. He's been a little hit and miss in the last four games with 6, 8, 2, and 5 strikeouts. So just want to let you know, but it is a decent matchup. Next one, Shohei Otani, the man, versus the Giants. Giants, seventh highest K percentage versus righties in the last 30 days at 25.5%. Otani, 160 Ks in 124.2 innings. I bet he wishes he got traded from the Angels at the trade deadline. But anyways, the last one, me, Darvish, versus the Mariners. Huh, you get it? Dad joke? You, me? Anyways, Mariners, fourth highest K percentage versus righties in the last 30 days, 28%. Darvish, 121 Ks in 114.1 innings. Those are the best pitcher strikeout matchups, and now it's time for the pitcher report. All right, we have a 15-game slate for August 9th. These are the first eight matchups. We got a lot of TBDs right now as of recording this video since we do it the night before. But uh, up top, we got Ashcraft, who's been pitching well versus kind of a struggling Cueto. Uh, big advantage there for Cincy, but Cincy has been struggling lately. And before I talk about the other pitchers, look at that walk percentage. Now you have it. So as you can see below, the average walk percentage is 8%. Um, so you can kind of determine that on who you know allows more runners with walks and maybe compare that to offenses that walk more and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully that helps you also. Um, look at the bottom. One of the biggest pitching mismatches, I think, in the for this season. Max Fried, one of the best pitchers in the majors. Quinn Priester. I think it's Quinn, right? Yeah, I don't know. Priester for the Pirates, he is freaking awful, guys. He is just not good at all. 14.9% walk rate. Are you kidding me? That's almost a set, close to a 17% K rate. That is absolutely bonkers. I know it's only 19.2 innings, but I just don't think he has much to him, to be honest with you. He might be good later, but right now he is struggling. So other than that, we got some decent matchups. Obera and Fado, um, you know, I give the advantage to Obear there. He's been pitching kind of under the radar pretty well this year, so... And then we don't have a pitcher for the Rays or the A's right now. And then we got Chris Flexton for the Rockies. Man, is he bad this year. He wasn't this bad a couple years ago for the Mariners, but he is struggling almost a two whip right now. So those are the first eight matchups. Let's take a look at the final seven. Uh, no pitcher for the Red Sox going up against Jordan Christmas Tree Lyles. And then we got uh, kind of an, eh, not really an even matchup, but Hendricks Peterson. That doesn't thrill you that much, but Peterson will probably get rocked in that game. Um, and then other than that, no pitcher yet for the Yankees, uh, and then no pitcher yet for the Mariners. We got you Darvish going up against him. Uh, the Dodgers kind of own Merrill Kelly, so uh, we may talk about that a little bit later. But uh, yeah, so that's a decent matchup there, and Otani going up against nobody right now. So obviously, as you can see, a lot of holes um, in some of these matchups. They may come out, you know, the morning of or something like that, but... Yeah, take a look at the K percentage, walk percentage, whatever it is that you use to get first five inning wins, total wins, money line, whatever it is, take a screenshot. I hope these really help you because we are in this together. We got to beat the book. So there it is. That is the pitcher report. And now it's time for the best bets. Game number one takes us out to Cincinnati. We got the Marlins at the Reds. Reds money line minus 130. Marlins money line plus 110 with an over under of 10 runs. My best bet in this game. Lord help me. It is the Reds' first five money line at minus 125. I know the Reds have been struggling. I get that. Their offense has struggled. Um, let's talk about this matchup. Johnny Cueto, the 40-year-old or however old he is, is on the mound for the Marlins. He's given up four earned runs and three of his five starts. A big reason of that is because he gives up home runs. How about five home runs in his 22 innings this year? So um, the reason for that, he gives up 28.3% ground ball percentage. That is awful, by the way. He's in the second percentile of starting pitchers. So he gives up a lot of balls hit in the air. I know it shows he's due for some positive regression, but keep in mind, he's only thrown 22 innings. He has an average K rate, not getting any ground balls. That's not exactly a good recipe. So I think the Reds offense can score a few. They got to bounce back. They got too many good hitters to be this, uh, to struggle this bad, in my opinion. Graham Ashcraft is on the mound for the Reds. I didn't think I would say it, but Graham Cracker has just been unbelievable lately. 1.84 ERA in July. Wow. If you look at his full numbers, like on the pitcher report, I wouldn't go by it, honestly. He was a totally different pitcher before his injury than he is right now. Um, and the Miami offense, 25th WRC+. plus. Now, I understand that doesn't mean a lot because the Reds have struggled, too. These are two bottom probably seven offenses in the last 30 days. 
The Reds are at home. This is me counting on these young hitters to bounce back and hit old man Cueto. I call him old man, but I think he's the same age as me, like 37 or something. But anyways, I just think, and I got, don't forget, I got the first five money line. So if it's tied one to one after five innings, then we get a push. So at least we have that. I almost went with the minus half a run in the first five innings, but you know, with this Reds offense, I think I feel a little safer where if they tie, it's still a push. So give me the Reds first five money line as my first bet of the night. Let's move on to game number two. Game number two takes us out to the desert. We got the Dodgers at the D-backs. Dodgers money line minus 135. D-backs money line plus 114 with an over-under of nine runs. This is supposed to be an awesome series, but the D-backs are just completely fading and the Dodgers are taking over this division. My best bet in this game, Dodgers team total over four and a half at minus 115. Now, the Dodgers are going up against Merrill Lynch. No, Merrill Kelly is on the mound. He's been pretty good this year. I'm not going to sit here and say he's just awful, uh, but he has been worse at home, almost a run uh, worse at home at 3.6 ERA. But he has faced the Dodgers 14 times, okay? He is 0-10 with a 5.45 ERA. That is bonkers to me. Now, I know that records and what you do three years ago really doesn't matter that much, but the Dodgers do own him. Now, if you want to talk about the current Dodger hitters, the current Dodger roster, these offensive players are hitting 306 against him and 207 plate appearances. So these guys pretty much own him as well. Uh, he has an 8.25 ERA in five starts against the Dodgers last season, which is a lot of the same players. So he struggled against them. Now, his first two starts to this year were against the Dodgers way back in April. These are two different teams, obviously, by then. Um, and he only gave up two earned runs in 10.1 innings. But in those games, a 1.91 whip and a 1.76 whip in those two games. He's been lucky, guys. He's been absolutely lucky. He gave up a lot of hits, gave up a lot of walks. Um, I don't think he can get out of it anymore. And behind Merrill Kelly is a bad D-backs bullpen. You know I love betting games where behind a starting pitcher is a bad bullpen. They're completely fading. Dodgers are guaranteed nine at-bats in this game. Give me the Dodgers to keep rolling against Merrill Kelly and push him to an 0-11 record. Give me the Dodgers team total over 4.5 as my second best bet. And now it's time for that hitter parlay. It is hitter parlay time, and we have been on an absolute freaking roll with these. I got two guys that we have been using a lot. I'm not trying to use the same guys. I just want you guys to know this, but this just worked out this way. We got two lefties, Christian Yelich and Cody Bellinger, one plus hit each at plus 100. Yep, we're using Bellinger again. Let's start out with Yelich first. Uh, first, he's two for seven versus Chris Flexen. Um, I expect probably five plus at bats from him. He hits leadoff, and Flexen and the Rockies uh, pitching staff is awful. I think the Brewers are going to score a ton of runs this game. He has eight for his last 24, 333 average, hash brown math. Three for eight in this series so far against the Rockies. But let's go back to Chris Flexen. Oh my gosh, he ain't flexing on anybody, guys. He is absolutely horrendous. 6.94 expected ERA, a worse ERA. 1.93 whip. That's almost two. Yep, I know. It's crazy. I figured that out on my own. Almost two. 13 hits per nine innings, which is in the fourth percentile of starting pitchers. He's awful. Behind him, what is there? A nice, fresh, awful Rockies bullpen. Yelich, one plus hit. He's got to do it in five at-bats against his pitching staff. Next one, Cody freaking Bellinger. I swear I don't just try to bet him every day, but my goodness, has he made us a lot of money. He is hitting, get this, 539 in the last seven days. 539. What in the freaking world is he doing with a hit parlay at minus 210 when there's worse hitters at minus 280 or 300? I just don't understand. I know it's he's a little farther down in the order. He's not a leadoff hitter. It hasn't mattered, obviously. He is on a 10-game hitting streak. If I lose because... He decides not to get a hit finally, and he cools off for just one game. You know what? Then I'll take the loss. It is what it is. But Bellinger has been making us a lot of money. He is now going up against David Peterson, the lefty. Yes, a lefty. He gives up 10.6 hits per nine innings, which is the 12th percentile. And behind David Peterson is, you got it, a terrible Mets bullpen. Now, you're saying Bellinger's a lefty. David Peterson's a lefty. Why would you pick a lefty-lefty matchup? First of all, I've done this with Bellinger before this year, and he didn't have a problem. But Bellinger is hitting 358 versus lefties in 106 at-bats. He has no problem. He has a higher average, actually, versus lefties than righties. He hit 400 in July. For an entire month, he hit 400. 
and he's hitting 538 in the month of August. I mean, guys, he's playing like an MVP candidate. It's just unbelievable, and we're still getting low odds, so I like it. Give me Yelich one plus hit. Give me Bellinger one plus hit at plus 100. I love that value. And now it's time for the bets recap. There it is. Reds first five money line at minus 125 on DraftKings. If you want to go with minus a half around the first five, you can do that too. I think it's about even money. Dodgers team total over four and a half. Hopefully they stay hot against Merrill Kelly. That's at minus 115 on FanDuel. And then we got the two lefties. Yelich, Bellinger, one plus hit each at plus 100 on FanDuel. There it is, guys. There's a couple bets that I'm still looking at. Uh, I may add another one tomorrow. I really do think I, or later today, I really do think I'm going to add another bet. Um, I think the Brewers are going to score a lot of runs. And uh, there's some other hitter props. I may even add a second hitter parlay. We'll see. But anyways, thank you guys for the support. I cannot thank you enough. I appreciate it. Hope everyone has a great Wednesday, and we'll talk to you later.